Hi everyone, welcome to Papa's Workshop. Here I'm going to continue on with the beginner series today and one of the things that you're going to need to do pretty soon is be able to bring home lumber from the big box stores or the lumber yard. And to do that, you got to be able to do it safely. So today I'm going to show you how to handle the large sheet goods, the four by eight sheets, and I'm also going to show you how to take care of the regular dimensional lumber. So let's get started. In the back of a small pickup truck, have you ever wondered what those slots are for? One's on top of the wheel well and one's toward the rear of the truck. The distance between the wheel wells is less than 48 inches, so the wood needs to sit on top of the wheel wells. Well, those slots are actually designed to hold a 2 6 so what I have done is pre-cut two two by sixes to fit into those slots and I've actually marked them so that I know not to grab them and cut them and use them for something else which quite frankly I've done a number of times but I use this all the time whenever I'm hauling the sheet goods. Now the tie down point is actually on the outside of where my two by six is located and that causes a problem because it would make the, t the sheet good tilt. So a very valuable addition is a milk crate. That provides a support so that I can do the tie down. Now I use a flat cart to bring the sheet goods to the truck. And the reason is I really cannot pick up and carry a sheet of plywood any longer. So what I do is just slide the sheet goods over to the bed of the truck, rest it there, and then just lift it up and set it on the tuba six. Once that's done, then I can get to the end and slide it right up into the truck. And that makes it a whole lot easier because again, I can't lift a sheet of plywood. I guess that's just part of getting old. Now that the plywood's in the truck, I grab my milk crate and I'm gonna slide that right underneath the end of the plywood and that's going to rest on the tailgate itself. Now I'm using the ratchet style tie down straps and I'm going to put a link in the description where you can purchase these. But what I'll do is just go ahead and unroll these from my storage and then take the end and hook it down at the tie down point on the bed of the truck. Then I just stretch it across the top of the plywood making sure that the strap is actually straight and it's not all twisted. Now that I've got the strap nice and straight, I'll just go ahead and hook the other end of my tie down to the anchor point at the bed of the truck and then just go ahead and ratchet it down. It doesn't need to be real tight, but it needs to be tight enough so the material is not going to slide around. And then I'm going to secure the rest of the loose end because I don't want that blowing out in the back of the truck. And just to show you, I can grab the end of the plywood, shake it up and down, left and right, and it's not going to move. So now it's safe to bring it home to the shop. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to tie down the dimensional lumber. This can be a little bit tricky and it's something that's often overlooked and the lumber still will slide left and right. So I want to show you how to prevent that. First, I want to show you how to do it the wrong way. In many cases, people will just hook it to the bed of the truck, throw it over, and then just tie it down. And the problem with doing that, once this is tied down, this material will still slide left and right. And that's what you don't want to have happen. That can be dangerous because it can slip and get away and have it come out on the highway, and that would be a very horrible thing. So don't do it this way, please. It's not a safe way to tie the material down. Now what I want to show you is a completely different way to tie it down so that it will not slip left to right and it will stay secure. 
And what I'm going to do is take this tie down strap, which is already hooked into the bed of the truck, and I'm going to slide it underneath the material, come over the top, and I'm going to bring all the material with me, and then I'm going to go underneath the strap and pull that up like that. Now what that does, it creates a loop right here. And then what I'm going to do is come underneath, I'm going to come underneath my wood and go through that loop. Now that will form a very tight secure load. Using this method that secures the load and will not allow it to move and it holds it in a downward pr pressure and it holds it where it doesn't move left or right. So looking at it from the other side you can see that when it comes through this loop it's actually pulling downward to be able to secure it in the truck and it's also my anchor point is below the material so it gives a good control for the left and right movement as well. So I have it anchored at the bottom of the truck bed. I showed you how to tie this and then I have it tied off on the other side and this is ready to transport. And now I can be safe and assured that I know that this material is not going to slide left or right or have any chance of falling out of the vehicle. So there you go. You now know how to be able to carry the plywood and you also know how to carry the dimensional lumber safely in the back of a small pickup truck. But what happens if you don't have a pickup truck? If you have a regular car or an SUV one of the things that you can do in most lumber yards or the big box stores you can ask them to cut the lumber for you. So if you know the project that you're working on and you know the basic dimensions, you can ask them to cut it. In most cases, it's free. Sometimes it's a very nominal fee for them to cut it. But it's going to be a lot easier to be able to haul the materials home if it's already cut to size. So plan ahead a little bit and it'll make the starting of your project a whole lot easier. Hi everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.